Hey Motor Man here. I've got a serious topic to talk about today and it's finally stopped raining here in Florida. It's been raining on and off and uh, thunderstorms and everything else for about four or five days. It's finally stopped. It's early in the morning. I'm going to go for a ride. I'm going to talk to you about this particular subject. That it's it, You would think it's common sense, but if common sense was so common, people wouldn't be making these stupid mistakes. So let's go for a ride and we'll talk. Well, okay, so let me title this video don't make this a uh, dangerous riding mistake and uh, it is dangerous and at the very least an expensive mistake and we're going to talk about uh, a particular a particular case uh, I wrote an article about this uh, a few years ago and uh, recently ran into the the guy I, I wrote this article about and that's what uh, well that'll be the rest of the story but uh, let me tell you how the initial conversation went some years ago a friend comes up and he says uh, I wanna, I'm thinking of buying my wife a street glide what do you think I said well I, you know I didn't even know your, your, your wife rode a motorcycle because every time I see it you, you know she's always on the back of the bike he said uh, yeah well that's because uh, she's got this Suzuki 800 and you know we go on rides with friends and uh, we, we usually take the back roads and, and she has a problem keeping up and uh, I, you know I know the kind of rides the, the this guy goes on with his friends I've been on a couple of them they usually uh, 75 miles in you know going in another 75 coming back and, and just uh, you know on back roads they stay away from the interstate they stay away from uh, you know, US 19 which has got a lot of traffic on it I said to him well you know that Suzuki that that should be fine for her to, to keep up with he says well you know we anytime we go around a curve or something like that she she falls way behind so I think uh, I, I need to get her a, a, a bigger bike and I said you know getting her a bigger bike if she's having problems keeping up with that Suzuki that should be the perfect bike for the type of riding that you do I said do you think that uh, Getting her a bigger bike is a, a good option, or maybe get her some training on the bike she already has. And uh, he really had no answer to that because he knew that that was definitely the smarter thing to do. Obviously, the Suzuki 800 is more than enough motorcycle to keep up with the type of riding they're doing. Top speed on the ride might be 60, 65 miles an hour, and probably average speed 45 to 50 so yeah that that Suzuki would be the perfect bike for him but what he was really saying is I, I think he had an ultra and, and uh, he thought well you know I'll get her that bike and I'll, I'll ride the the street glide sometimes that's kind of a selfish thing to do but I know a lot of guys do this and I'm not just speaking about women riders when I'm saying that this this woman shouldn't uh, shouldn't be moving up when she couldn't ride the, the motorcycle she has right now a lot of guys do the same thing in fact uh, if you saw a video I did uh, I think just last week about a, a rider who came to my class on an ultra and it should have been on a 250 so both men and women do this thing but uh, I know that a lot of times guys will try to talk their wives into getting a bigger bike and uh, it's it's you know you might call it selfish I, I really don't know what it is but I understand why they do it but they might even believe it's going to help them but and it's not to say by the way folks that women can't ride bigger bikes I've said this a thousand times the size and strength of a rider has no bearing on their abilities it's all technique if you have the proper technique if you've trained in those techniques you can ride any motorcycle you want show you a video right now of my wife doing that on a her 900 pound motorcycle and ladies if you're watching this with envy or guys what she has is training in the proper techniques it's not that she's especially gifted this this didn't come to her like this when, when she was born I trained her I made sure that before she got the heavyweight motorcycle 
she was comfortable on the, the bike that she already had and I think we started her off on a 650 then she moved up to an 1100 uh, Honda Ace Tour had that for a couple of years and then uh, moved up to a Harley Davidson Road King and when she got really good on that bike she decided she wanted to get a bike with a tour pack and have the ability to carry all, all the gear all the stuff that she likes to carry which in her case is about 150 pairs of gloves I won't get into that now but as you can see she's a little tiny thing she's only five foot three she handles the bike with the ease of a child's toy anybody can do it if you've got the will and you're willing to train there's no magic involved here folks it's just training in the proper techniques and practicing over and over again so guys if your wife has a mid-sized motorcycle or even a 250 if she's not very good on that bike don't don't get her a bigger bike just get her some training you'll, you'll save a bunch of money uh, and, and of course you could save her life now this particular guy that I was talking about I, I hadn't seen him in a few years and I ran into him uh, just a couple of weeks ago I said hey what are you riding now he says oh we uh, I don't ride anymore I says why not he said that the bikes are just just too dangerous I said well what happened he said well I was riding with my wife and uh, coming around this curve and uh, I don't know if she crossed the center line or the, the the car coming the opposite way crossed the center line. But anyway, there was a, a terrible collision, and uh, she got hurt really, really bad. And I decided that uh, motorcycles uh, just aren't aren't for for us, and, and they're not very safe. I said, well, "What bike was she riding?" He said, I, "She had a street glide." So <laughs> I didn't say I I, uh, I held my. I held my tongue. I didn't say you should have listened to me, but I think he knows that he should have listened to me. So guys, please avoid that. Uh, even if you, you know, you're going to surprise your wife for her birthday or, or Christmas or whatever it may be and get her a bigger bike, get her some training on the bike she's got now. Recently had a a woman come to my class, her and her husband. Her husband was very good, very, very skilled. And in fact, I, I did a video about her. She had a very low fear level. She was on a mid-sized bike and, and did excellent in the course. Now, she might be ready for a bigger bike. Um, I would like to see her. Her husband had a, uh, a street light. I'd like to see you do the course over again on his street glide. And if she does good with that bike, yeah, then, then uh, get rid of the smaller bike. Get something uh, bigger and a little bit more comfortable. But please, don't do this, guys. Don't get your wife a bike just because you'd like to ride it as your second bike. Or even if they ask you to, uh, uh, get them the bigger bike because they see uh, there's a lot of women on, on bigger motorcycles these days. Uh, and she wants one too get her some training first make sure she's able to handle the motorcycle she has now with skill and confidence and that doesn't mean just having the ability to ride straight down the road anybody can do that i've seen some horrendously bad riders who can ride just fine as long as they're going straight the problem arises when something gets in your way so don't just get that bigger bike because you want to be one of the crowd I think I told this story before. Uh, a couple of years ago, we were at a a bike rally, and I saw this girl. She was on a a beautiful Indian. I think it's the Chieftain, and she had a, a wonderful paint job. I mean, it it had to be at least two, three thousand dollars. And I'm watching her coming through the parking lot, and each time she had to make a turn, she's looking for a parking space. She had to stop, duck walk the bike around the turn. So she's, she spent probably $30,000 on a motorcycle that she can only ride straight. And I, I couldn't help it, but I, she walked by our booth. We were doing our, our shows there. And uh, I said, hey, come here, take a look at this. And I showed her my 
ride like a pro on your Indian video. And she said, oh, I, uh, I don't need that. I just ride for fun. <laughs> Thinking to myself, what does that mean? You don't need to know how to ride because you're just riding for fun. You only ride from uh, bar to bar. It, it makes no sense. But yeah, she, there's a lot of people like that. But don't be one of them, folks. And please don't forget to subscribe to this channel and hit the notification bell. That way, whenever I come out with a new video, you'll be notified immediately and you'll get to watch it. I've got on my YouTube channel, Ride Like a Pro YouTube channel, I've got over a thousand videos. So you could binge watch them, you could spend hours just watching what I have up there now. And of course, if you go to my website, ridelikeapro.com, you'll see I have my videos for sale, the Ride Like a Pro video, Surviving the Mean Streets video. And by the way, we have those two videos on not only DVD and download, but on a thumb drive on USB. And uh, to find that, just go to ridelikeapro.com, click on the store, and you'll see on the left side the USB. That's very good because you can take it with you when you go to practice and just plug it into your phone, watch the particular exercise you want to practice, listen to what I'm telling you on there, and then go ahead and do it. Plus, you got a hard copy that it's always there. If you get a download, I know we get a lot of calls from people saying, yeah, I got the download uh, two years ago and uh, my computer crashed and I don't have it anymore. Well, that could happen. You should always back up your computer. But the best way is either get the DVD so you've got a hard copy or the USB. So that's the new Ride Like a Pro. We also have Ride Like a Pro on your Indian DVD and download. And Ride Like a Pro on the Tale of the Dragon both in DVD and download on the website and folks it's not gonna it's not gonna put you in hock to get these videos I mean the ride like a pro video is 20 bucks you probably spent that on breakfast I'll skip breakfast one time get the video and go out and do a little bit of practice in just an hour a week will change your life so hope you enjoyed this little talk I hope you take it to heart and use a little common sense. And one more thing before I go. Uh, I've got a request. Somebody said they'd like to see me do a video about riding in the rain. Well, first of all, I don't like riding in the rain. I try to avoid it as much as possible. But there's nothing different about riding in the rain than riding in the dry. You use common sense, just like you do in your car. You're going to slow down a bit. You're going to stay a little bit further back than normal from the vehicles in front of you. You're going to slow down more than usual when coming around a curve and uh, that's really about it I mean you don't need a video to show you this it's, if, if you're gonna <laughs> if you're gonna ride in the rain just like you you ride in the dry uh, well I, I feel sorry for you you slow down in your car I'm sure you should slow down on your motorcycle that's the main thing you gotta know so till next week keep the shiny side up and I'll probably have another video up uh, Monday or Tuesday. We've got a class coming up Sunday. If you haven't signed up and you're in the area, please do so. we got a couple open seats. And it's supposed to be a little bit cooler. When I say cooler here in Florida, that means it's going to be under 90 degrees on Sunday. So until next time, 